did buy a car. If you could comment down below what car I bought, if you've been paying attention, I think I've only mentioned it one time in a story more than two weeks ago or a week ago, so I don't think you'd see it. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning back in. We've got 70,000 subscribers now, so thank you very much if you are a subscriber. And if you're not, why don't you subscribe and hit that bell so you get a notification. That sounded really, that sounded pro. That was pretty good. Anyway, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. So this is the Howl Damage Ceiling Project. I'm running a little bit late. The boys are already inside. I was filming a tool haul video down at my local trade tools where my friend, he started a new electrical business and he had thousands and thousands of dollars to spend that was just my son in the background so we're back at this hail damage ceiling project pretty slow going so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and I thought I would talk along here with you so I'm gonna watch the video at the same time I get straight into it and I'll catch up with you very soon once I stop talking and once I speed up the video we're gonna use the taper mate the North Star taper mate let's get it done What's up, Timmy? Oh, you know, it, it, mate. How are you? What's that? My gun has got to go in the shop. What's it? I'm here, ready to go. What's up, Roy? This drop of the shoe throws on the camera. Oh, Maybe somebody here. Down here. Yep. They're looking good. All done, ready for taping. A few extra sheets, damn. Three sheets, was it? Extra? The boy's gonna get real angry at me because I'm just wasting time and I'm here late and everything like that. We've got the North Star taper, mate. Craig, you use one of these or you just use the tape from my box before? This uh, tape right in my box. Right, this one. Well, I've used that one time. With me. And we also have, we're not going to use this today. But if you don't use the tape up, you use this auto taping bazooka, North Star, drywall tools. And don't ask me how to use it, because I can't tell you. But I just wanted to show you. Do a bit of a pose, hello. Would have thought the green would have been uniform with that green. Anyway, we're gonna use this North Star taper. We're running corner cement through it, which is a like a hot mud, dries really fast, it's really strong. Craig is advised not to do that. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna be fast. So. All right, just giving it a bit of a spray with WD-40. Just helps loosen anything up afterwards and keeps everything loose, lubricated. It actually works pretty good. Uh, we're just setting up the taper mate, North Star taper mate right now. And I should have listened to Craig. He said, don't use corner cement. It's corner cement 45. If you don't know what that is, it goes off really fast. It's what's used to hold the cornice up. The cornice is on the ground there. I'm just watching the video with you. So we mixed up some corner cement and it is quite runny as you'll see Craig is about to hit these butt joints now and it is dripping and that's what you get when you run out of bazooka, it's like that almost pretty messy but it doesn't need to be that bad. So Kurt, I had to speed this up because I'm yelling at Kurt a couple times. No, not really, I mean it was just too wet so I asked him to add a little bit and once you add some the working life of the product lessens greatly. So that's gonna slow us down quite a bit. We're already slowed down. So we didn't get off to a good start. So he's come back with the with the bucket full of compound and Craig is got some fresh tape rolled out there and getting it all ready. That lid is really hard to open. The North Star tape made if anyone's got one. Especially when your hands are a bit muddy so we got the mix is Kurt's just added a little bit to it and just hitting those butt joints first I mean we could have done this by hand it wasn't that much 
a few rooms. Yeah, my my back bleeding, my taper paddle, whatever you call it, set to a wrong angle. My taper paddle is not very good. Yeah, if you don't hang on, when you're using the taper, you drag the tape along, which is when I had to go in a minute, you'll see I struggled a little bit with because it starts to pull with you and see how we have to start and stop there. That's because there's a kitchen island bench top there and you have to reach over. So we just did, you know, did all the ones on that side of it. I had to fast track it because number one, it'll take too long to show the whole lot. Number two, you know, it's not the neatest, it's not the best job just because we're rushing with the corner cement, so. And after filming with the drywall gangsters for so long, you know, you don't feel too great about your own work. But in the end, the job is done now. We're up to this step, so make sure I'm gonna be releasing videos uh, almost daily on this and a lot more. I made another couple of purchases and stick around for that that's coming up I'm just gonna release the the video as it comes and I show most of the process of the painting and everything on this job and how it turned out it turned out really well so Craig's just wiping the excess into the the box for me and that's not going to help as well to in, in the life the working time of the compound as well by keep adding it in you can see just then I dragged the tape and I left quite a bit from the wall. Probably the corners wouldn't even cover it. That wasn't taped. We actually went back and fixed up those little bits. We just wanted to keep moving and make sure everything, all the tape that we did put down was better nicely. It's probably a bit of a mistake using the corner cement. Why did we have to rush ourselves like that? We should just do it nicely, calmly, like the drill against the boys. Well, like Craig does without me. Craig didn't want to use the corner cement, but I did. I know it dries fast and it's so strong. I know how strong it is because I ripped that corner off right there. This particular joint here, I ran out of uh, mud and it didn't stick and the tape sort of fell down so I had to fill it up and we did it again. But I'm starting to find it easier. You know when you have a nice open joint, it's nice and easy. Now uh, this is the point where the mud starts to go off and I had to speed it up because I was really struggling at the end. I couldn't, the wheels on the on the taper wouldn't spin anymore, it was just getting clogged up, I couldn't go anymore. So it was really quite difficult. So we just uh, just cleaned the box out and here we are, we're back at the expansion joint. And Craig's just chipping away a bit of um, a bit of cornice and I just used the, the, the multi-tool with a straight piece to cut it back a little bit. And I've got the uh, expansion joint, it's the Trimtex Magic Angle and just measuring it to size, making sure it goes through the corners. And then I spray some Trintex spray adhesive onto it. And then you make sure it's straight. It looks good by eye as well, on the hallway. And then I'm just stapling it in. And make sure it's all flat nicely. And make sure one side is moving independently from the other. Rather than pulling the taper back out, I just did this bit by hand. We're using fiber fuse here. The taper, we had paper tape, regular paper tape in that. I was using fiber fuse, I really like that. Never bubbles or anything like that. And if you've got big gaps and you pre-fill, you can almost get away with like not having it, the pre-fill fully dry before you go over it. Did I just say that? Oh my God. No, nah, just joking guys. All right, nice close up shot of the me there. I'm not the fastest at loading up and the, the mud is going off quite a bit because you can see how much we've done. So just trying to push what's left. Oh no, this is a new mix. This is a new special mix that we mixed up by hand. Getting some nice drips on the ground there. Taking my fiber fuse. Trying to keep it nice and straight. Oh, nice technique. And I like to just coat over the top. 
and fill the joint and bed bed the the tape in a little better. And then of course I take the excess and take the stuff off the middle, make sure nothing's sticking out for the next coat. So it's only a really quick scrape for the second coat. If you don't know, I started off doing painting and decorating, so I know how it should be finished. I'm not the, you know, obviously I'm not the best, but um, I really enjoy every part of plastering because I did so long painting, and I've been plastering for about six years now, something like that. I don't know, I'm not even counting, but I really love it. Really love doing it. Like, yeah, I enjoy doing this all day. Wouldn't make much money doing it by hand, the big meters, but. All right, we're back at the control joint. I put a coat on here. And they have a little tool that comes with the magic angle. And when it's dry, you just push it along and it's just the right curve and it sticks in the little channel and it takes all the, mud, the dried mud out so you're ready for the next coat. And you need to do that every coat. You don't want to build up too much at all. Uh, you can see there's a gap between the ceiling and the walls. Yes, that gap is meant to be there. I'm no good at using the trowel myself. I just learnt with a paddle. Craig is good. Drywall Gangster is good. This is the second coat with the trowel. So. Well, then that's the second and we probably did about four coats, I think, with it. So. That is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought I'd just watch it with you guys and just talk. I'm really tired. We've been working flat out. We are, like I said earlier, we have finished the Howl Damage Ceiling Project and that video is coming to you and we are straight back onto another one. And I'm filming a few things. There's a, quite a bit in between. I did buy a purchase. I did buy a car. If you could comment down below what car I bought. If you've been paying attention, I think I've only mentioned it one time in a story more than two weeks ago or a week ago so I don't think you'd see it if you did see it and you can tell me what car I bought in the comments below I will give you a $50 trade tools voucher or a $50 Amazon US voucher well I gotta buy it for you because I don't have the voucher I gotta buy something for you from Amazon so what car did I buy and that is coming up next video coming up